Hi, my name's Rich, and today we're going to be looking at the two subclasses that are going to be introduced in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, the up and coming new Dungeons and Dragons supplement that should be coming out in the next couple of months, I believe. But uh, yeah, let's get started. Now, the first one we're going to look at is the Undead Warlock, and we're looking at the Unearthed Arcana because the book hasn't officially came out yet, but this is a free supplement on D&D Beyond and uh, the Unearthed Arcana on Dungeons & Dragons main website. So uh, yeah, let's go through some of the spells, the abilities and see what it's all about. So starting out, the description goes that uh, the undead is an entity that resides in the dark corners of the multiverse. Your patron could be Akerarak, Azalin, Lord Soth, Strahd, or some other ancient undead being. You may seek to gain knowledge from your patron's countless lifetimes of experience, while it may see you as a piece of its centuries-long plan. Now, for the spell list, at first level you get uh, Bane and False Life. False Life is a great way to boost up your temporary hit points, and it does scale with levels, so that's always very helpful with the Warlock. I know that there are some Warlock spells that don't scale up, like uh, the Tentacle thing, I'll put it up here. But uh, yeah, the scaling is very good. And as a warlock, you're going to be a little more tanky than an average wizard, but you still need all the protection you can get. And the second spell, Bane, is a fantastic counterpart to Bless. It's a good way to debuff a large selection of smaller creatures. And when you're up against uh, earlier levels, there's a good chance you're going to be fighting goblins or kobolds or in this case, zombies, if we're going for the horror theme. The second level spells you get are Blindness Deafness and Phantasmal Force. Phantasmal Force basically uh, lets you create a hallucination against the enemy. They have to make an intelligent save throw, but if, you, if they don't make the throw, then uh, you can really use this to great effect uh, if you use your imagination and... Uh, it's a little bit gaslighty, but uh, I'm sure with the right tact and decency, this spell can be used for some great storytelling beats. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, it has no effect on undead or constructs, so if you have any golems you need to try and add some spooky illusions to, that's not going to affect it. And you can even deal some psychic damage with this. Now, I don't think it scales up with uh, levels, but it's a nice one to have in the back pocket, and if you don't you end up using it, you can always swap it out at a later level. Uh, blindness Deafness is great against spellcasters. Giving a creature blindness when they're trying to attack you uh, on melee range is a great way to uh, avoid some damage. And the Deafened ability does help when you're trying to be more stealthy and sneaking around. But it does involve a constitution saving throw, so make a judgement call about creatures if they have high constitution or even if they have a sense of smell this spell can be a little bit redundant. At third level you get Phantom Steed and Speak with Dead. Phantom Steed doesn't have any combat capabilities but for traversing around out of combat this is one of the best ways to travel short of a teleportation spell. It uses the statistics for a riding horse very fast. This is a utility spell and it does take one minute to cast Still, a uh, good utility spell, no use in combat really. Speak with Dead is one of my favourite role-playing spells. You get to ask a dead creature five questions, and the DM has to put their role-playing hat on and really conjure up what he wants the players or she wants the, the players to know or not know. And this can help advance the plot and the story to great effect without giving away too many details. If your party's in a bit of a bind, they don't know where to go or what to do, then you can subtly suggest Speak With Dead. The fourth level spells you gain access to are Death Ward and Greater Invisibility. I'm surprised Invisibility isn't further up on, earlier on the spell list, but it's always great to get Greater Invisibility. It does require concentration and it lasts for one minute, but uh, casting invisibility on your rogue companion can really help them out. Death Ward is like a get out of jail free card. 
it's quite powerful, but it is a fourth level spell. Uh, but contradicting that, if you're a warlock, you have limited spell slots anyway, so having a high level spell isn't much of an issue. As soon as you get access to it, you can cast it without fear of uh, wasting your power too much. It's quite similar to the half orcs ability, which I can't remember the name of, but I'll put it up on the screen somewhere. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it can be used to save a life and can drastically change the complexion of combat. Finally, the fifth level spells are Anti Life Shell and Cloud Kill. Now, Cloud Kill is a classic, it's been in DD for generations. And with this, you can summon a cloud for 10 minutes that deals 5d8 poison damage, which is quite steep. And if the enemy doesn't have any way to get around this or uh, navigate it, then you pretty much block them off. It's fantastic for controlling the map as well as dealing damage, so keep that in mind. It has quite a good range on it, and you can move it 10 feet in each round, but the downside is it's poison damage, and a lot of creatures are resistant to that, including undead. Anti-Life Shell is very situational. It lasts for one hour, which is fantastic, and it's uh, surrounding yourself by 10 feet. It's great for blocking lots of spells, but the downside is, as it states in the description, an affected creature can cast spells or make attacks with a ranged or reached weapon through the barrier. So it's just good for physically stopping creatures from getting through, but if they have a pokey spear or throwing a spell, then you're out of luck. The other downside that it doesn't hedge out undead or constructs. So anti-life shell is okay. It's not fantastic. Next up, we're going to look at the abilities of this subclass. Starting at level one, you get form of dread. You manifest an aspect of your patron's dreadful power. As a bonus action, you transform for one minute. You gain the following benefits while transformed. You gain temporary hit points equal to 1d10 plus your warlock level. Once during each of your turns, when you hit a creature with an attack, you can force it to make a wisdom saving throw, and if it fails, it's frightened until the end of your next turn. You're immune to the frightened condition. You can transform a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. For Warlocks, generally speaking, the short rest is favoured, but this is more balanced towards a long rest because it's such a powerful ability, especially at level 1. Those temp hit points can really help you last a couple of rounds extra. The appearance of your Form of Dread reflects some aspect of your patron. For example, your form could be a Shroud of Shadows, forming the crown and robes of a lich patron, or your face might transform into a bat-like figure due to your vampire patron. It's worth noting that this does contradict the false life spell that you get at level 1, but if you run out of form of dread, false life is a good backup. Giving creatures the frightened status can help you out in lower levels to try and survive a bit longer, but I think as you climb up the levels, more and more creatures are immune to being frightened, so it kind of dwindles in power the further you go. At level 6, you gain the ability Grave Touched. Your patron's powers have a profound effect on your body and magic. You don't need to eat, drink, or breathe. In addition, when you hit a creature with an attack roll and damage against the creature, you can replace the damage type with a necrotic damage. While you use your form of dread, you can roll one additional damage die when determining the necrotic damage it takes. As far as I'm aware, Eldritch Blast counts as the attack you can use for Grave Touched. I may be wrong, and if I am, please correct me down in the comments. I'm not 100% sure about it, but I'm sure the community will help out. The ability to not eat, drink, or breathe is a total game changer. Let's you swim underwater, no problem. It saves on roleplay heavy versions of eating and drinking, and it really adds to the character. A little bit spooky as well. Now, the form of Dread and Grave Touched, it has a bit of synergy with the Pact of the Blade. Being able to run in and hit creatures, make them frightened, and tank the extra damage makes you handy as a frontliner. Being able to go up front and fight beside the Barbarian and Fighter is really helpful and distracts people from the more squishy classes like Wizard and Sorcerer. At level 10, you gain access to Mortal Husk. Your connection to undeath and necrotic energy now saturates your body. You have resistance to necrotic damage. 
If you are transformed using your form of dread, you instead become immune to necrotic damage. In addition, when you are reduced to zero hit points, you can cause your body to explode. Each creature within 30 feet of you takes necrotic damage equal to 2d10 plus your warlock level. You then revive with one hit point in your previous space, along with your gear, and you gain one level of exhaustion. Once you revive this way, you can't do so again until you finish 1d4 long rests. You can essentially tell everyone to hang back, you can rush in and become a tactical nuke of sorts. Just be wary of the spacing and make sure you don't catch any of your fellow teammates in the crossfire. Reviving with one hit point is fantastic, but the level of exhaustion can grind you down, so be aware of that. If you use this, use it at the end of the fight, not at the beginning. Finally, at level 14, you gain the ability Spirit Projection. Your body is now simply a vessel for your spirit. As an action, you can project your spirit from your body. The body you leave behind is unconscious and in the state of suspended animation. Your spirit can remain outside your body for up to one hour or until your concentration is broken, as if concentrating on a spell. When your projection ends, your spirit returns to your body, or your body magically teleports to your spirit's place. Your choice. While projecting your spirit, you gain the following benefits. Your spirit and body gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage. When you cast a spell of the Conjuration on Necromancy School, the spell doesn't require verbal, somatic or material components that lack a gold cost. You have a flying speed equal to your walking speed and can hover. You can move through creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain, but you take 1d10 force damage if you end your turn inside a creature or an object. While you are using Form of Dread, once during each of your turns when you deal necrotic damage to a creature, you regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage dealt. And this is once every long rest, and rightly so. This has utility in and out of combat, being able to send the ghostly apparition away and then teleporting the body can help you navigate through tombs and unpassable doorways. And the healing from the necrotic damage, it's not fantastic, but, but remember, you're going to be dealing necrotic damage with your mortal husk and grave touched ability. Well, what do you guys think of the subclass? Let me know down in the comments, and uh, if you enjoy these, then leave a like, or if you really enjoy them, subscribe. There should be two playlists down below, one for all the Warlock guides I've covered so far. It's about three or four subclasses, but it keeps counting up and up. And the other one is covering all of the other Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft subclasses. There's only one other one, but there's also some race options, and yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So thanks for watching, I'll speak to you next time. Bye!